Hello and welcome to this Biology 206 Human Physiology Lab Overview for the Reflexes and Reaction Time Lab. So uh, just starting out with a, a little bit of background. Uh, so keep in mind that when we are talking about a reflex, basically we're going to be looking at this kind of automatic response uh, many times without kind of higher levels of intervention, higher levels of kind of conscious perception, uh, kind of making a decision uh, about what's going on. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to see that it's going to be occurring locally uh, between some type of stimulus out here in the periphery. Information is going to be going into the spinal cord. Uh, and even though that information may be transmitted up to the brain, what we're focusing in on is this loco-myotactic reflex where we've got the stimulus eliciting uh, some type of response uh, within the spinal cord, so transferring that information uh, to an effector, transferring it to a motor neuron that is going to go out and cause stimulation uh, of uh, the muscle in this case. So a myotactic reflex is even if we've got a spinal cord that is detached from these higher levels from the, the brain, uh, it's still going to be capable of being elicited. Uh, and so in this case, the stimulus uh, is going to be tapping on the patellar tendon. Uh, the tapping on the patellar tendon uh, is going to uh, basically cause a stretching of the muscle, and that stretching of the muscle is going to cause a stretching of a sensory receptor. Now that sensory receptor is going to be attached to a sensory neuron that is going to carry the information uh, along this long neuronal processes back up into the spinal cord where it is going to synapse on a motor neuron. Uh, so that synapse is going to be located within the spinal cord. Uh, that is, stimulus is going to activate this sensory neuron. It's going to release its neurotransmitter, activate this motor neuron, and this motor neuron as the effector is going to go out uh, innervate uh, the muscle that was stretched over here and in this case uh, the stimulus was stretching the muscle stretching of the stretch receptor that response is going to be contraction of the muscle uh, and so if we tap this we lengthened our muscle up here the contraction is going to shorten the muscle uh, and so we've got an example of a very simple uh, reflex arc Now, in addition to reflexes, we can have reactions. Uh, and in many cases, these reactions uh, are going to be associated with a conscious stimulus response uh, as well. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to be talking about, uh, because it is a conscious level uh, response, we're going to be looking at integration of information within the brain. And so that sensory input, again, some type of stimulus is going to activate sensory receptors. That is going to be carried into the nervous system uh, along sensory neurons. Uh, in this case, that information is going to get up to uh, the level of the brain. So we're going to have synapses, inner neurons being present, uh, integration of that information, uh, and then responses that are going to be going out. Again, the same basic idea. Ultimately, uh, we're going to activate uh, an effector. In this case, we're going to activate motor neurons, uh, and those motor neurons are going to uh, basically activate the muscle fibers, cause muscle contraction to occur. Now, the difference between a reflex uh, is that we've got a stimulus, one synapse, uh, and a response, uh, and that is going to be occurring at a subconscious level without conscious perception uh, involved in making that decision, where if we're doing a reaction, we're looking at that stimulus going into the nervous system, multiple synapses in order to be integrating the information. So we're going to have multiple interneurons that are going to be present basically involved with making a decision as to what that response is going to be. Uh, but then ultimately that response is going to be very similar to what we saw in our reflex. We're going to have some type of motor neuron going out and innervating the fibers. Uh, and so the stimulus and the response may be somewhat similar uh, in process, uh, but we're going to be going through a lot more integration of the information with inner neurons in between. So the objectives for this week's lab, again, listed here as well as in the, the lab 
uh, instructions, the lab report. Uh, again, these are uh, kind of sample questions to think about to learn the information as well as possible questions that you would see on the lab exam uh, in addition to the questions on uh, the lab study guide and the lab, uh, the questions at the end of each lab report. So this week in lab, what is it that we're actually going to be doing? Uh, so like every week, uh, you want to download the template. Uh, it's available as a Google Doc, so you want to copy this to either your Google Drive or onto your computer if you're going to use Microsoft Word or OpenOffice. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, answer the questions, go through the activities, uh, and then ultimately submit it again through Canvas. Now the first example uh, is going to be using the myotactic reflex. You do not use the power lab uh, for this activity, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and so what we're going to be looking at uh, is the patellar tendon reflex. Uh, and so basically like that simple myotactic reflex uh, diagram that we looked at further, you have the individual sitting uh, at rest, their leg hanging freely. Uh, you're going to tap the patellar tendon with the reflex hammer. Tap it firmly, but not to uh, cause damage, uh, and only use the reflex hammer, don't use other devices. Uh, you're basically going to tap on the patellar tendon. Uh, tapping on the patellar tendon is going to cause a stretching of this muscle. And so as that muscle is stretched, that muscle spindle, that sensory receptor, is going to be stretched, and that's going to activate that sensory signal that is going to be, called, that is going to be carried along the sensory neuron into the spinal cord. Uh, and so we're going to do this under a couple different conditions. We're going to look at it first using a normal reflex. Uh, we're going to look at it using the gendrastic maneuver uh, to see if we can elicit a stronger response or at least elicit a response uh, in an individual uh, that is somewhat distracted uh, in some way. Uh, and then we're going to do it with a subject who is attempting not to move their leg uh, to see, you know, how, what level of control is there to kind of prevent uh, the response from the stimulus on this very simple myotactic reflex. The second activity, uh, we're going to use the pupillary light, yeah, pupillary light reflex. Uh, so again, we're not going to use the power lab for this activity, uh, but basically we're going to use a pen light, a, a small flashlight, uh, and then uh, shine it into the eyes uh, and watch their response uh, in both eyes. Uh, and so uh, basically look at, you know, kind of what is happening with the pupils. Are, are the pupils uh, kind of enlarged or are they can constrict? Uh, and so you're going to record those observations uh, in uh, the lab report for this week. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're going to take a look at reaction times. Uh, the reaction times is an activity that we're going to be using the power lab. Uh, with this, we're going to be using uh, the finger pulse transducer uh, and a push button uh, switch. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing uh, is basically testing reaction time uh, with a visual cue, uh, with warning that it's about to occur, uh, with uh, another cue, uh, with a distraction going on, uh, or an auditory cue as well. Uh, and so basically what we're going to be doing uh, by looking at reaction time uh, is looking at the amount of time that's involved from a stimulus through this relay that's going to be occurring, through those inner neurons and the processing of information associated with it, before we get that measurable, before the, the uh, before we get to the, the um, activation, um, the reaction, in essence, that we're going to be looking at in the lab. Uh, so looking at it under these five conditions, trying to get an idea about the processing time involved with this. Uh, once you've completed the lab activities, as well as the questions at the end, uh, you want to save that and then submit your lab report via Canvas. Uh, so submit lab report here, reflexes and reaction time. As always, uh, your lab instructor may have additional information available to you. Uh, and so um, please um, see if they have any changes or updates for the lab for this week. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you and have a great week in lab then.